Welcome to episode 102 of the Enhancing Human Experience podcast. I'm really glad you're here and tuning in for this episode. As always, I certainly appreciate it. I know there are tons of awesome podcasts to listen to out there, and the fact that you're listening to mine really means a lot to me. I really do appreciate that. So in this episode, I want to make it worth your while. I want to make it really valuable that you tuned in. And to do that, we're going to talk about the joy. Because at the end of the day, in the game of life, it is all about the joy. I know you're going to get a lot out of this episode because in my own work and in my own you know, inner and outer work, when I tune into the joy and when I find my own joy, everything starts to work. And you've probably experienced this in your own life. And so today we're going to dedicate the entire podcast to talking about the joy and this notion that when we find our joy and when we tune into it, all of the good things we want naturally flow to us you know, at the right time in the right way, and everything works in a harmonious type of way. This idea is somewhat counterintuitive because in our world, we're taught to go after what we want in a direct fashion. But as we learn more about the universe and as we learn more about ourselves and what's really going on here and being, you know, learning about being the cause of the effects that we want, not going after the effect, but being the cause to draw or attract the effect to us, that's when life starts to get really fun because that's when the game, that's how the game is really set up in my own experience and from what I've studied. And maybe you have realized this in your own life. The the counterintuitive notion is that rather than going directly after what you want, move in a tangential type of fashion and become a cause of what you want. And let me give you some examples. I've talked about this before in different fashions, uh, specifically in my book, Just Be It, The Secret to Having What You Want in Life. This notion that if you want to have more money, that's a common one. Let's talk about the money, right? Who doesn't want more money flowing into their experience? So if you want more money flowing into your experience, going after the money and chasing the money isn't the best course of action to take. What a much better course of action to take is to become like money and become money, be money, right? And what I mean by that is develop the qualities, characteristics, and attributes of money, right? Um, This is all about being the cause of having more money flowing into your experience. And as you're aware, you can do this with anything in your life, right? You can do it with anything that you want to attract. But again, you want to be the cause. And what I mean by being more like money is being valuable, being a problem solver, being a solution to people, um, being creative, being the, the, the person that creates opportunities for other people. Look at how Jack Ma, who created and founder, founder of Alibaba, who has an incredible story, by the way, look at what he did. He didn't chase the money. He chased the opportunity to help other people get money to help other he chased being valuable right and he created a platform that helped oh small and medium-sized manufacturers in china play in a global scale whereas prior to him coming onto the scene and creating alibaba alibaba and these channels for these smaller and middle-sized manufacturing companies in china who didn't have exposure on a global scale he created that platform for them and helped them become wealthy So what is he doing? He's being money, right? He is literally being valuable and being a problem solver, helping those people get what they want. That's ultimately at the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to do is help one another get what what they want, right? Get what you want. Um, And that includes money, that includes inspiration, that includes entertainment, um, encouragement, motivation, all of those things that we all want. It's not always a material thing. It's not always an experience. It's not always a solution in the like practical, I guess, classical sense. It can be a solution on an inner level too. One of my favorite ideas, and I got this from trying to remember what book it was. I think it was one of the um, Blanchard, Ken Blanchard's books on, you know, one minute manager or one minute salesperson. And one of those, he said that as a salesperson, you are not only helping your client get, you know, the product or service or thing that they want, 
but you're also helping them get the good feelings that they want. And by the way, you're also helping yourself get the good feeling of serving and helping one another. And I think about that all the time. That's a straight up metaphysical statement right there because talking about the inner game, right? A lot of salespeople may not go down to that level. A lot of human beings don't go to the level, that level of what's really the driving motivating factor of what you're doing and that is to get a good feeling. And what's really the driving motivating factor of what other people want, right? That's a good feeling, right? They One, they want to solve the problem, but ultimately as a emotional being, as an experiential creature, a human being, we want to feel good. And that's why, let's tie it back in, that's why it's all about the joy. The joy is like the base level feeling that we're all wanting, right? And that's why when we find our joy and when we operate in a spirit of joy, we start to magnetize all the things that we want in life, including the money, the relationships, the friendships, the opportunities come to us, right? But it only happens when we become, when we align ourselves with joy and when we actually become joy, right? We're being the cause of the experiences of good experience uh, flowing to us, right? So the question we ask ourselves is how do we find the joy, right? How do we, how do we do that? And the idea that I want to offer you in this episode is to develop your relationship with yourself and develop your enjoyment of yourself. Because the reason I say that is that as all metaphysicians tell us, it's what's going on inside of us, the way we feel about ourselves is going to mirror and be reflected in the experiences we have in life. And maybe you've seen this in your own life or in the lives of other people. When you have a really great relationship with yourself, what, how do you feel? You feel pretty good, don't you? When you're optimistic about your future, you feel really good, don't you? And so finding ways to feel good, finding ways to develop the relationship with yourself is absolutely foundational and key to having better experiences as a whole. And just it's like anything in life. It just takes focus. It takes commitment and the will to do it. But it really is ultimately the place we should be working for again from my experience from what I've studied and from the people that I've learned from it really is where we should be putting our focus and not necessarily chasing after the actual thing that we want right whether it's the money or the relationship or uh, better experiences in our career all of those things all of those things the way I see it are, and in my own experience, are, are byproducts of feeling good. When we're feeling really good, we open the channel for the right thing to come to us at the right time in the right way. But if we don't feel good about ourselves, if we don't feel good in relation to ourselves, then everything is blocked from us. Our energy is all out of whack. Uh, people don't want to be around us. Opportunities don't want to be around us. Money certainly doesn't want to be around us. Because our vibration is not high. It's really low and dull and not beneficial, right? It's we're, we're not bringing joy into the world. One of the things that I think we're kind of here to do is to be a channel for joy to come into the world. And we can only do that when our channel is really, really open. And the way that we open it is by enjoying ourselves. And I should say that I'm working on a very short essay. I'm going to try to keep it to one page or so. That's that's going to be included when you sign up for my email mailing list, and I'll try to have it out by the time the podcast is published. But definitely within you know a short period of time, I've got a good start on it. But it is all about this notion of enjoy yourself, develop the relationship with yourself, be in harmony with yourself. Right? Don't be having like a juxtaposition in yourself and being, you know, butt heads with yourself because that's not going to solve any problems. That's not going to ever open the channel and help you be a magnet to all the experiences that you want to have in life. It just doesn't work that way. And so this document's going to be available as a download when you sign up to my mailing list. You can already get 21 ways to radically enhance the human experience and the other document, Renew Morning Ritual, which is all about helping you tune in every morning before you start your day to the things and experiences you want to have, your big audacious goals. So I'm going to include this Enjoy Yourself short essay 
all about the power of joy, and that is like the end and the means, and it's all right there in that download. So and that's why I wanted to share with you in this episode of the podcast that it really is all about that joy. You know, this is the stuff that Abraham Hicks talks about. They say that your purpose is joy. Your only purpose is joy. They also add a little bit of have fun in life and enjoy yourself and be in that spirit of joy and be satisfied with your life and be satisfied with yourself because their like logic there is that you're never going to arrive at a place of joy if you're not in joy right now. You're never going to be satisfied somewhere down the road if you're not satisfied right now. I really love that. It's so common sense, but sometimes, myself included, we human beings don't really think common sense, commonsensically. Don't even know if that's a word, but we don't think common sense about it, right? We think if we put in the pain and suffer that we're going to arrive at some place where we're not going to be in suffering or in pain down the road. And it just doesn't work that way. Because again, it's a vibrational game we're playing. It's an energetic game we're playing. And when you look at it in that standpoint or from that perspective, you realize that you can't arrive at a at an energetic place of joy and happiness if you're not enjoying happiness right now, right? Those energies, an unhappy, unsatisfied energy will never produce a satisfied, happy energy. And so hopefully that's kind of dawning on you as you go through your life and in your business and your career and all those things. And it is a practice because we have been so ingrained as human beings throughout history to, you know, sacrifice and to punish ourselves and to be um, in an internal battle with ourselves, right? And that just never gets the job done. It never really gets the job done. And so changing that mindset and changing that paradigm is really, really important to getting more of what we want in life. So that's what I want to offer you in this episode of the podcast. It is all about the joy. Develop some type of daily practice to help you develop joy within yourself and cultivate that joy. And and again, the way that I look at it and what I want to offer you is it's specifically talking about the relationship with yourself. And the reason for that, like I talked about, is that everything is a mirror of that. Everything is a mirror of your relationship with yourself. Lots of people have talked about this and most, you know, you hear people talking about this in the, um, dating and relationship world. And they say that, you know, after a number of failed relationships, I finally started focusing on my most important relationship, which was my relationship with myself. And guess what happened? Boom. Magically, they found a great relationship in the outer world. That's, that's common. You hear about that all the time that, you know, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for, you know, um, fulfillment or you're looking for satisfaction or you're looking for all these things that we all want in all the wrong places and never finding them look within give develop those co- those qualities within the relationship with yourself the value of yourself you know the respect and then you're going to see that start showing up in the outer world it's so much an inner game and it all it does is take a little bit of work You know, how do you develop a relationship with other people? You spend time with them, you care about them, you ask about them, you take an interest in what they're doing, right? Same thing goes for developing a relationship with yourself. You take an interest in yourself, care about yourself, give yourself good food and good thoughts and good environments and um, little pats on the back and like motivation and inspiration and be a friend to yourself. That's really all it is right there, right? Don't be so hard on yourself. Love yourself. Trust yourself. All these things that we the build up the relationship with ourselves. As I'm talking about this, this is all what I bundled into the seven pillars of personal development, what I call the seven pillar process that is currently available on Udemy, but don't go there and, and buy it or listen to it because I'm going to take it off there soon and put it onto the Focus and Flow store and also on my website. But it's developing those seven pillars of personal development. And what, what that is, is developing your relationship with yourself, the love, the respect, the forgiveness, um, the confidence and, and all of those things that we all need, they support an extraordinary life. They support extraordinary experiences. And I'm really excited about that specific product that I need to kind of re, 
package and re-put into it. Well, not repackaged, but re-put different place because Udemy, it just wasn't getting any exposure. I don't think it was the right place for it. And I want to put it more on my website and also the Focus and Flow store as a digital download. Um, so look for that to be coming down the line as well. That's one of the things that I'm working on. But hopefully this episode has inspired you to develop your relationship with yourself in a deeper, more satisfying way. And again, the, what you will realize in the outer world that, that we're realizing, that I realize on a continual basis is better experiences happening to us, right? When, when we do that inner work. All right. Before we wrap up the podcast, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping and share some information with you here and then get on with your day have an awesome day but let me go through this first first of all if you enjoy the podcast if you like it if you've got some value out of it it would be super awesome if you would take just a few seconds or minutes to jump onto itunes and leave a five-star review that would be super awesome um, there are links on my website to itunes or you can also google enhancing the human experience itunes or through your Apple Podcast or iTunes player on your desktop or your phone, that would be really awesome. That's the first thing I want to ask you. The second thing is, have you visited Focus and Flow online store at focusandflow.co? If you haven't, go check out the products that are in the store, all designed to help you get more of what you want in life, all designed to help you remember that you are a focusing being that you have the God force flowing through you, um, infinite divine intelligent flowing through you, and you can focus it on the things and experiences that you want to have and bring those into your into your day to day lives, right? Make them a reality. Focusandflow.co. Go check out those products. More products on the way all the time. While you're there, why not sign up for the mailing list? I'm developing a weekly content piece of valuable content call it, that I call Focus and Flow Friday, and that is weekly emails, either in written form or maybe even audio form. And that's coming in the line very soon. So sign up for my email list and you will get those. And just keep in mind, if it's not something that you want, if you find it's not valuable, totally go ahead and unsubscribe. You're not going to hurt my feelings at all. But that is Focus and Flow Friday. One of the new pieces of like valuable content that I want to push out with ideas and concepts that will help you get more of what you want. Lastly, but not least, last but not least, we talked a lot about joy in this episode, and I want to do a plug for my book, Boundless Joy, which I talked about earlier in the episode, and it is 101 timeless ideas that talk about our true nature, you know, mankind's true nature. We come from joy. We're always seeking joy while we're here in our physical form, and we're going to go back to joy when we leave this physical form. So why not get to know more about what your true nature really is and pick up a boundless joy available in the Amazon store as a Kindle book or as a print version. So you can find links to that on my website as well or searching boundless joy in Amazon. All right. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, all the best, health, wealth, and success. Bye-bye.